All right, we're going to take a dive right back into the, uh, the Sixers elimination last night because we want to focus on the two superstars. We'll start things off with Ben Simmons. He had, a, he had a lot of flaws exposed in the series, especially on the offensive side, as evidenced by his one-point performance in Game 2, which leads us to our first big number. He posted a plus-minus of minus 63, mm. the worst mark of any player on either team. Mm. Not only that, but Philly outscored the Celtics by 48 points in the 63 minutes that Simmons was not on the floor. Jalen, uh -huh. what do you make of this? I love Ben Simmons. He has a, a, ter a terrific future ahead of him. He's a franchise-changing player, a terrific passer, great size, great athleticism. I think one of the things people underestimated that he can run really fast. Whatever that's worth. But <laughs> I don't know what it's one, worth. The, the, the one thing. Do you get points for it? The game is so very hard when you can't shoot. Yeah. It, it's so tough. And I said this when he got drafted, and a lot of people gave me flack for this. I think Ben Simmons shoots with the wrong hand. You did. How does he I not know so that by much now? basketball. When he drives to the basket, look, when he's in when it, when it's contested and he's going to the basket, he shoots with his right hand. Mm-hmm. That lets me know. When it's 18 seconds and he gets an offensive rebound, you're under duress. You're going to go to your strength. He shoots with his right hand. But when he goes to the free throw line, he's shooting with his left hand. I think that's something that has to get corrected. That's one. Two, when you can't shoot at all with range, now we can guard you with anybody. We right. can guard you with a small guy to get underneath you, like a Marcus Smart or a Terry Rozier or even a Jalen Brown. You could put me on him. Correct. Because I know you're not going to yes, make it. it so it's or fine. a big that can sag off and use their size because they're used to going against powerful guys. Like Al Horford can guard him. Morris can guard him. So that big flaw in this game was exposed in this series. The, the thing that I don't fully understand, and maybe this is just furthering the genius of Brad Stevens, is how underexposed that seems to have been all year. He was a transformational player. He he was phenomenal against Miami. He's he is, probably gonna be, gonna be the, the rookie of the year. He's the guy people are saying is the next Magic Johnson, the next LeBron. All of a sudden, after five games against Brad Stevens, he has a hole in his game the size of the Grand Canyon, and, and you're talking about him shooting with the wrong hand. How did, how did it t take this long for the world to figure that because out? Because the further you advance, the more you get scouted, the more teams aren't playing back-to-backs. -back. They're not playing four games in five nights. They can, they can literally zone in on your strengths yeah. and on your weaknesses. And now if I have the talent to execute a game plan, Miami just didn't have the bodies. They knew he couldn't shoot, but they didn't have the bodies to um, force him to stay perimeter-oriented. The Boston Celtics have the bodies to do so, and that got exposed in this series. Well, we're not piling on Ben. These are just the facts, but we have another big number. Look at uh, this. It's the lack of range that came back to bite him. 23 of 35 attempts in the restricted area. Went 5 for 24 on all other shots, Jalen. So I think, know he has to improve it, but how? Just think about this, Michelle Beadle. He made five shots, okay, in the paint. Yeah. He made, he missed all four shots mid-range. And you know what's not pitcher? That's only four. He didn't attempt the three. Right, right, it's not even on there. That's not even on. That's actually the biggest statistic. When your point guard, your primary ball handler, does not shoot with range, it suppresses your offense. That's just the bottom line. That's why T.J. McConnell, when he started getting minutes, it put him on the wing. Look at him now in the post. Look at him now receiving the Ooh, basketball versus good. being a distributor because when you can't shoot, it really suppresses your offense. And there's one other thing. You point out how they turned to McConnell. They knew who they did not turn to was the number one pick in the draft. Not once. They didn't give it one try during the entire thing. I mean, I understand that people still think that Fultz has a bright future, speaking of guys who can't shoot. And I don't mean to make fun of him, but that was clearly the problem here. But, I mean, does that set up a red flag? Like, the, 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 McConnell opens up the floor for them, but Markel Fultz can't get one minute in a five-game series? That's head-scratching to me. And I saw how it happened with um, Jaleel Okafor when he was in Philly. It seemed like he played well. And then once they got Ben Simmons, it's like he was getting DMPs. And before you know it, he's just ostracized and shipped off. For Markel Fultz, the other confusing thing, when he played, yes. he actually had a triple-double. Yeah. It's not happened. like that he didn't show anything. So for me, for him not to even get an opportunity to play when you're going against a team that you just traded um, Tatum to get faults, and Tatum is out there balling, and you gave up a pick, and, this and is the it. guy that you received in return to take number one is getting DMP. That just, that just fascinates me. So when you talk about the process, you got to think about they have a big offseason, okay? We know about Simmons. We know about Embiid, franchise-changing players. 
They have Covington, who I really like, is a knockdown shooter. Bellinelli's a free agent. Ilya Sova's a free agent. J.J. Reddick's a free agent. Mm -hmm. They're not playing the number one pick. So there's a lot of questions for a team that has one first-round pick and five second-round picks.